Hello and greetings everyone. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day today. In this video today, we want to discuss Coinbase's dominance in the custodian industry. Since this ETF frenzy started back in June, when BlackRock first put in its application with the US Security and Exchange Commission, this started a frenzy that we see here. Back in June, Bitcoin was sitting at 26,000. And since its frenzy, the price shot up all the way and reached its peak before it came back down at 44,000 uh, in Bitcoin. It's since then consolidated. Uh, currently, it's at 41,900. This ETF application that BlackRock started opened a whole new industry, which is Bitcoin custody. And in this industry, there is no competition. It seems like Coinbase is taking it single-handedly and is completely dominating. We want to also understand the impact that that has on not only on the market, but on its competitors as well, specifically Binance. This is what this video is all about. So let's get right into it. Let's start from the very beginning. Back in 2020, MicroStrategy used the services of Coinbase to purchase their initial 425 million worth of Bitcoin. This, of course, was a notably public relations move from Coinbase and the CEO, Brian Armstrong. This put Coinbase on the map. Now, with us knowing how volatile Bitcoin is, of course, we've mentioned this many times, many of its competitors or many other institutions were hesitant. So they were just standing in sidelines and watching. So what happened was that three years later, not only is MicroStrategy still buying Bitcoin, its latest purchase was uh, over 600 million worth of Bitcoin, but its balance sheet has been also very successful. So MicroStrategy's bet on Bitcoin produced a 300% gain for the investors in 2023 alone. Let's look at it in more details. In 2023, MicroStrategy's stock has soared by 337%, making it one of the biggest gainers in the US amongst companies valued at $5 billion or more. This topped NVIDIA at 234% and Meta at 194%. This, of course, didn't go unnoticed and hence BlackRock wanted to have a piece of it. BlackRock has been struggling in uh, satisfying their clients. They're in need of a new cutting edge technology. They're in need of a new emerging market where there's a lot of room for growth and uh, where they can make a lot of revenue for the shareholders. They being the largest asset managers, of course, the pressure is on them. So after monitoring MicroStrategy, seeing their success and how they outpaced major institutions such as NVIDIA, and Meta, they finally decided to take a leap of faith and filed for their first spot Bitcoin ETF and also mentioned that they want Coinbase to be their custodian. So here, as you see, they clearly took MicroStrategy's blueprint by not just using Coinbase as the broker, but also as their custodian as well. The takeaway here is that Coinbase has been listed at, as Bitcoin custodian for BlackRock. Conveniently, BlackRock already has an existing strategic partnership with Coinbase. The two companies announced last year that Aladdin, which is BlackRock's software and institutional investment platform, would be connected to Coinbase's Prime for crypto trading and custody. Aladdin is the most leveraged software in the entire financial industry. Now, let's look at some challenges because not everything is rosy. Okay, so the first challenge is centralization concerns. The concern is that how can a custodian have so much power? This raises concerns. And Coinbase's dominance also will lead into a lack of diversity and also potentially hinder healthy competition. And this is exactly what they want. Centralized power into a single entity and they want dominance. Then they don't want no competition. They want to eliminate the competition. Now, this is where it gets interesting. This is strategically done because if we look at, let me scroll up here. These are the top richest Bitcoin wallets. Okay, this is the list. And if we go back here, you see the chart. The chart speaks for itself. 41%, this is Bitcoin's share on the market. So they have a big chunk of Bitcoin. The 37% you see here are flagged exchanges, other exchanges. 16% is the US government and 6% is unknown. But for us, what we're looking at right now is the 41%. Percent Binance has been dominating and going back to the challenges right now, because right now, keep in mind, Binance is the largest exchange globally in both volume. And as we saw here on this chart, 
in our Bitcoin custody as well. With that said, the whole idea is to put power in a single entity and to hinder a healthy competition. That's the goal. And this is how they want to go about it. Because obviously Binance is a big threat for them. And they want to eliminate this. And to put this in perspective, let's look at the numbers here. In the realm of Bitcoin elite wallets, Binance stands tall, holding a staggering 41% or 430, close to 432,000 Bitcoin, which has a value of over 11 billion. Now, this distribution paints a vivid picture of centralized exchanges that are dominant players in Bitcoin's storage landscape. As of now, by far, Binance is dominating. And this doesn't sit well with the US, of course. So they'll want to do everything to ensure that they have control over this. And for their plan to play out, of course, they have to do two things. They have to have control into a, in a single entity and hinder a healthy competition. So this is how they're going to go about this. Let me paint a picture for you here. This is a, a new emerging industry. This Bitcoin spot ETF custody is a new emerging industry. And as of now, Coinbase is dominating this key Bitcoin ETF service. And they're way ahead of being the custodian for ETF applicants. How impactful is this? We really need to understand this. So as of now, nine out of the 12 prospective ETF issuers opted to go with Coinbase as their custodians. Keep in mind, I just want to show how impactful this is. We are now familiar with this. We look at the top 10 largest. This is for the US market alone. So we remove the Swiss, France, and Germany. Even if we remove these three, we're still sitting at 33 trillion because these three represent roughly 10 trillion. So taking them out would still put us at 33 trillion. However, if you pay attention, this list is far from being exhaustive. Still half a dozen more companies are missing on that list. Grayscale being the largest. If you look at this list right here under the companies, Grayscale is the majority holder of Bitcoin. Actually more than double that of MicroStrategy. So this is why if you add Grayscale, ARK and 21 shares, Bitwise, Wisdom Tree, Invesco and Galaxy, all these asset managers are missing on this list. You'll still be roughly around that 40 trillion mark. And this being an emerging new industry and Coinbase holding such a large market share from day one, let's find out what this is. Because the only one that hasn't decided yet is Hashdex. But all the other ones are opting for Coinbase, with Vanek being the only one going with Gemini. Fidelity, they've been into Bitcoin mining since 2014. They have self-custody. But the rest, they're all going with Coinbase. So if we do the math here, 9 out of 11 is 80%, right? Now, if we put 10 out of 11, because most likely Hashdex is going to go with Coinbase, that will put us at 90%, right? So between 80 to 90% market dominance and most likely 90% market dominance from day one. That's what Coinbase is going to have. And this will give them brand new revenue streams that they so desperately need to really dominate this industry, especially in the centralized exchanges. It will give them a new revenue stream in brokerage. MicroStrategy here laid the blueprint and used Coinbase as their broker to purchase their Bitcoins through their over-the-counter brokerage department. So obviously all these institutions will follow suit and use Coinbase's over-the-counter brokerage department to purchase Bitcoin. As you see here, these are very large institutions with infinite amount of money, basically. More liquidity than they will need to buy Bitcoin. Right now, and I want us to really highlight this, right now we saw that the largest holder of Bitcoin 41% is Binance. And if we go and look at the amount, it's approximately worth 11 billion. So if we look at the asset managers, 1% alone is already 430 billion. So this is just for you to understand that the largest holder of Bitcoin right now, which is Binance, has 41% worth of Bitcoin. It's worth 11 billion right now. And 1% of these asset managers alone, even if we say after removing these other ones and leaving the US alone, but 
adding these that are missing, of course, and still be at 35 trillion and taking 1% out of 31 trillion, it's still 350 billion, way more than they need to take over Binance's stash. But how will they go about doing this? To answer this question, we need to understand how Binance is making their money. How is Binance generating revenue? Before we get to that, let's look at this again. This is from PwC, one of the big four accounting firms. Top 10 largest asset managers control around half of the mutual assets globally. This is exactly what I was trying to make my point here. And you understand that majority of those large asset managers are based in the US. So you see all this liquidity will be focusing on a single entity and this will hinder healthy competition. And this is the only way to take out competition. The next question to answer is now, how are they going to go about taking out their competition, specifically Binance now? The spot ETF approval will be a bloodbath for crypto exchanges, okay? These will trigger unwanted consequences for crypto exchanges. It says here like Coinbase, but obviously Coinbase is out of the picture. They're the ones inflicting the pain to their competitors because like we just covered, they're the ones dominating this brand new industry of Bitcoin custody. And to do so, we first need to understand how Binance is making money. How is Binance generating revenue? And this is the revenue model. If we talk about the major source of Binance's revenue, trading fees are the answer. So trading fees are the number one major source of Binance's revenue. They have a 0.1 spot trading fee and a whopping 0.5% buy and sell on cryptocurrency fees. So keep these numbers in mind. If we now go back to this article, how is Binance going to compete charging 0.5% in trading fees? Keep in mind, BlackRock and Coinbase already have an existing strategic partnership. They already ensured that Coinbase will be able to offer a much lower and more competitive fee. So already, as you see Coinbase's fee structure, you see the amount 400 million and above 0.05% and the maker is even 0%. So the numbers that we are dealing with here are staggering. So Coinbase, as you see here, they'll be charging a 0.05%. So 10 times less than what Binance is offering. This is how they're going to really take the competition out of the game by charging 10 times less fees on cryptocurrency trades than the competitors. And as we saw, the major revenue source for Binance are trading fees. In addition to just trading fees though, we now clearly understand that Coinbase has a whole new revenue stream. And this is from over-the-counter brokerage, spread fees, custodian fees, of course, and the usual trading fees as well. So this is how they'll be able to attempt to get a big chunk of Bitcoin and dominate the Bitcoin custody space. The only way they'll be able to take a big chunk of the market share from Binance is by hitting them where it hurts the most because the major revenue source is trading fees with Coinbase lowering it all the way down to 0.05, 10 times less and uh, dominating in custody, having these major players use Coinbase's services with the strategic partnership they already have established with BlackRock using their software Aladdin. They'll also be able to use that as a new revenue stream now for other asset managers because they will want to also know and have those informations and data from them. So software as a service through Aladdin, brokerage fees through over-the-counter sales, custodian fees that they'll be also generating as revenue and the regular uh, trading fees as well. And they'll be dominating by up to 90% of the market. So all of that business, all of those revenue streams will go towards them. And in addition, I also want to show here, we already saw here that after a boom, there'll be a bust. And even Binance here, after its run in 2021, it was not immune from the downturn as well. And it peak was at $654 before it crashed all the way down to $219. So that's roughly 70%, 65 to 70% down the price. And then it went sideways for the next two years. And during these two years, imagine when they're losing on major trading volume based 
on the new industry that we just discussed. They're losing on custodian fees, on trading volume. We're talking about hundreds of billions, potentially. Tens of trillion dollar market is about to enter the space. So they're losing out on all of this revenue. And this, of course, will bring them down to their knees. And to take it even further, to highlight even the severity of the situation is that BlackRock now, on the application, the final application yesterday on the 29th, December 29th, they included JP Morgan as the authorized participants for their Bitcoin ETF. What does an authorized participant actually mean? Because BlackRock is not legally authorized to purchase the cryptocurrency itself. It has to team up with JP Morgan because they are the ones that will be acquiring the Bitcoin on their behalf. So that's the simplest way to explain what an authorized participant is. But to take it even further, an authorized participant is an organization that has the right to create and redeem shares of an exchange traded fund, ETF. They provide a large portion of the liquidity in the ETF market by obtaining an underlying asset required to create these shares, ETF shares. What is the underlying asset? It's Bitcoin. So when there is a shortage of shares in the market, authorized participants create more. Consequently, authorized participants will reduce shares in circulation when the price of the ETF is lower than the price of the underlying shares. This gives JP Morgan and BlackRock full rights to dictate and manipulate the market. And because JP Morgan, Coinbase and BlackRock are in strategic partnerships, this gives BlackRock literally an open line of credit. And furthermore, with such headlines that we just had, like with Binance, which had to pay $4.3 in settlements in a criminal case, and the CZ forced to resign and pled guilty. These headlines, of course, keep institutions away from uh, doing business with Binance. Besides the fines, Binance will also have to appoint an independent compliance monitor for the next three years and report its compliance efforts to the U.S. government. This was because the CEO, CZ, prioritized Binance's growth and market share and profits over compliance. He was quoted saying, it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. This opened doors to Binance's operations in the US. So Binance's growth in market share and profits, uh, US played a major role in that as well, of course, US clients. And these are the clients that obviously will not be using Binance anymore on top of all the other items that we looked at, such as this new industry that is coming in with new li fresh liquidity in tens of trillions US dollars, Binance will be missing out to institutions that are mainly and dominated by US. And this list, of course, like we said, is not exhaustive. There's still Grayscale, ARK, 21 shares, Bitwise, um, we have Wisdom Tree, Invesco, and Galaxy, and so on and so forth, in addition to these other ones. And again, just to highlight, Binance holds over 41% of Bitcoin, and that comes to roughly 11 billion. And to highlight, just 1% of roughly 35 trillion is still 350 billion. So back to the challenges. The whole idea of BlackRock, Coinbase, and JP Morgan is to yield power in a single entity and also hinder a healthy competition. As far as regulations, obviously once the SEC approves the ETFs, this part will be settled. And as far as technology, this part is also settled because as we saw, BlackRock has existing strategic partnership with Coinbase and that is that they'll be using Aladdin, BlackRock's institutional investment platform. This would be connected to Coinbase's trading and custody platform. So all these challenges are easily covered. In conclusion now, Coinbase is completely dominating this key Bitcoin ETF service as being Bitcoin custodians. They are single-handedly dominating this industry by having US-based large asset managers using their services, brokerage service, over-the-counter purchase, custodian services, and now also Aladdin software as a service. This will be also their new major uh, revenue stream as well. So all things look towards Coinbase dominance as far as Bitcoin spot ETF custodians is concerned. This will be a big blow for other crypto exchanges, specifically Binance. When we started this video today, we told you that we want to get into details in those two items. The first one was to understand how Coinbase is dominating this brand new industry of Bitcoin custody. 
and what impact it will have on its competitors, specifically Binance. I hope this video highlighted and clearly pinpointed the situation that we'll be finding ourselves within the market and it gives us a better idea of what to look forward to. So with that said also, there'll be a ripple effect. Of course, once Binance starts losing its share, they'll be forced to uh, readjust and restructure their business in the midterm. We'll see what that will mean to the industry. But uh, this is the strategy that moving forward, BlackRock, Coinbase, JP Morgan are using to gain Bitcoin dominance in the market and take full control of Bitcoin custody. So this is the video for today, community. Like I said, it all started with micro strategies three years ago. And now these large institutions led by BlackRock is now also coming on board to take over and try to control Bitcoin. In its essence, the blockchain technology cryptocurrency was developed for retailers such as you and myself that we can participate in a brand new technology that will give us the opportunity to shift that wealth gap that we experience in the traditional finance right now. This will give us an opportunity that we can be part of something early on that is big and we can participate in this financial system. As we see the momentum shift and that uh, BlackRock, JP Morgan and um, Coinbase through their strategic partnership are trying to dethrone the largest cryptocurrency exchange in trading volume and in the holdings of Bitcoin, which is Binance. And uh, that's their strategy. And uh, in this video, we just looked at in detail how they are going to go about it and how they're really going to dominate and succeed in that endeavor. So this is what this video is about. Like we always say, uh, the bull run ecosystem is all about informing, educating, and inspiring. Take this as a reference point. Do your own research, do your own due diligence, stay informed, stay safe out there. We welcome you to be part of our community. You can follow us on our social platforms. Be part of this vibrant ecosystem. In our community, we are all about educating, informing, inspiring. We're all about retaining liquidity, building uh, strong fundamental projects that are serve the best interest of the community. So if you want to know more about us, we have ample amount of videos on YouTube. We have three weekly events to educate, to inform. So feel free to join us in our social media platforms. With that said, I want to wish everybody a wonderful rest of their day and see you next time.